sounds like a story to me Some crazy fable that you would not believe Hello everyone, Robert here. Uh, I want to address a couple of things in this episode. This is my first one and Seth Davis has been very patient with me and showing me the ropes. Still, I forgot a couple of things, so I want to address that. You'll notice in the show, it just kind of suddenly starts with the story. It didn't give us a good transition, so I want to apologize for that. Same with the beginning of the episode. It's kind of a rocky transition. One thing that's really important to when I'm introducing the episode, I say the wrong title. Uh, so Avram, if you're listening, very, if you're listening up there, apologies. Um, the title should be Or All the Seas with Oysters. I mumbled the words or said something not exactly right. So it's Or All the Seas with Oysters. Another thing I wanted to point out when you're listening to this episode, the story um, will have kind of a different audio quality. We're trying something new for this episode only in particular, we tried something new. Um, taking the recording of the Grantha sighting, not from just a normal audio book, but an actual radio play. This is something that's produced by Sci-Fi Radio. You can find it on archive.org, which is a great collection of um, sci-fi stories brought to life uh, in, a, in a weird, fun radio drama way by uh, a full cast. So that's what we listen to. But um, it's an older recording, so the audio quality is a little fuzzy. So apologies for that. Um, thank you very much for your patience. Again, I work with the kindest, most patient people. Um, so Seth Davis and Emma Spear, thank you very much for your patience. And C. Christopher Hart, thank you very much for your patience as well. It was very fun speaking with you. And now uh, here's the episode. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the Avram Davidson universe, where we visit some of the greatest stories ever written, adored by Ursula K. Le Guin, Leonard Nimoy, Ray Bradbury, and Stephen King, enjoying classic tales such as All the Seas Have Oysters, The Golem, The Grantha Siding, and many others. Today is my first episode hosting. Thank you very much, Seth, for this opportunity. I'm hoping I don't completely screw it up. I'm really excited today to have a good friend of mine, C. Christopher Hart, come onto the show. Um, this story, the Grantha sighting, is very weird. Lots of things go on in Avram's story, but this story is actually has characters who are somewhat real. Um, they're based on real characters, and this story seems to be engaging old classic radio drama in a really special way. So I asked uh, C. Christopher Hart on. He is the creator of exoplanetary and to tell you what exoplanetary is it's a science fiction audio drama that follows four siblings all from the wolverton family as they work for a giant corporation and this corporation is called exoplanetary or exo for short and this is all taking place in the 26th century their bosses at exoplanetary want to expand beyond our solar system but the wolvertons all four of them just want to enjoy their lives. Now, the question of exoplanetary is where do the morals and happiness of ordinary people fit in a universe full of rich and powerful interests? Again, very happy to have C. Christopher Hart on the show and hope you enjoy this episode. Well, uh, Christopher, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So we've listened to this, this old sci-fi radio production of a Granta sighting. And we have some interesting characters in this who, who might be based on real radio announcers. In a Granta sighting, we have Long Tom. And what you just sent me, uh, who is this Long John? Well, Long John Nebel was uh, a guy who was around in uh, radio. He, he probably best known for his stretch on uh, WOR out of New York City. Uh, at that time, uh, there was sort of this um, pushback against uh, the, the, the takeover of radio by music and DJs. Hmm. Uh, 
Long John was part of that. Uh, also, Gene Shepard, if you if you know the film A Christmas Story, you'll shoot your eye out. Yeah, yeah Gene Shepard. Gene Shepard was a writer, and he was uh, he had an hour on on uh, W O R every night, and he would just do storytelling. When he would play records, but usually as the uh, underscore for whatever story he was telling. And I, I believe, I could be wrong on this, that Long John followed him. Now, this is rather late in the evening. Uh, Gene Shepard sort of coined the term night people, uh, referring to people who were kind of, you know, they were kind of more active in the evening after work and, and all of that. And um, Long John got the, the really late people who would want to talk about things like uh, the supernatural and the para paranormal UFOs. There was a lot of uh, UFO talk on, uh, on his show. Uh, he, one of his big guests was Jackie Gleason, uh, the, the, uh, the comedian in America, he's known as a comedian. If you're from overseas, you may, you may know him as the conductor of, of some very uh, schmaltzy mood music. But uh, in America, he's best known as a television comedian. And Gleason was also uh, one of the biggest uh, UFO, uh, pro-UFO experts uh, yeah. around. He had like the biggest library of paranormal uh paranormal books uh had a house that was shaped like a ufo i mean he was he was really there's even a story there's even a story about gleason uh talking richard nixon into showing him the corpse of an alien which i won't get into but it, it just goes to show you that if you if you make the right donation <laughs> it can get you a long <laughs> way Anyway, but uh, yeah, Long John had this, had this, and he was sort of the precursor to Art Bell and mm -hmm. Coast to Coast AM and and all the guys that have, have followed him up to up to even even the uh, the, the the much maligned Joe Rogan. I mean, there's mm -hmm. he's definitely a predecessor of all that, and he had a very popular late night radio show is also the show also debuted uh the seven second delay the first time they had one anywhere because some of some of long john's listeners were a little enthusiastic uh -huh. and they were worried that uh one of these call-in people would uh suddenly start uh cussing and saying saying all sorts of filthy language so so but but yeah this is the, what as soon as i read the story i was like oh of course he's he's doing a parody that long tom character is a parody on long john nebel hmm. uh it's very 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 clear what he was doing there and um and 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 to be honest the farm couple was um not typical of hmm. of what i i mean you could find a lot of uh the the long john stuff on on youtube and stuff uh mm -hmm. and other and other places there's there's all sorts of archives of people who've recorded the program um but uh you know he used to get these kind of excitable people and i i think i think one of the things i love about the story is how <laughs> the story of the experience is presented as true right in the in the yeah. in the in the in the universe of the story but uh, it's it's exaggerated for for media mm -hmm. it, uh, and it kind of kind of makes a very fascinating and i think cogent point on on how how the media definitely affects these things uh much like a a, a watched pot never boils a watch story tends to, to boil over uh, in this in this fashion, and and is, is certainly 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 on the ball. Avram was certainly on the ball with this one, I think. Yeah, very much. And using these names, I mean, the name is almost the same: Long John, Long Tom. Yeah, yeah. So he's making some sort of comment on these interviewers coming to a real experience the farm couple they meet this this blue alien who kind of speaks in gibberish and is just looking for a, a clean diaper and maybe mm -hmm. some milk for its baby and mm -hmm. uh, 
that's pretty that's a pretty intense experience on its own but then having radio announcers kind of sensationalize it even beyond that what also comes down to there's also there's also something to be said for um i, I believe is her name emma or esther the, oh, the, emma, the far, yeah emma the far, emma the farm wife is there, she's she has this perfect little world but she's lonely she mm -hmm. she she just wants to have some company from town once in a while and now she's got a perfect way of getting that that's exactly what she wants she doesn't want fame she doesn't want fortune she just wants some nice folks to stop by and uh have some company once in a while and uh you know there's also so so to to a certain extent you know i think she's like like most people who get involved in this sort of thing she's she's pretty harmless and 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 and, and really what she what she wants in her heart is rather pure but it's also not something that she can necessarily ask for hmm. you know, without without having uh you know Aliens something, come something down on her porch. yeah 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 it just sort of landed in her lap and she doesn't want it to go away hmm so this uh this idea of having just a character kind of being sucked into a larger story and then finding not taking advantage of it necessarily but finding oh this works perfectly for my life um really centering on the sweetness of characters reminds me of exo and i thought we could talk about exo in general a little bit if you can explain it and then sure. i think specifically like brother kermit really reminds me of some of these characters in oh. this grant the sighting and then even um violon the idea of violon mm -hmm. um, but anyway christopher what is exoplanetary well, well <clears throat> exoplanetary is a uh, science fiction epic that takes place in the 26th century it is a uh it's an audio drama uh you can find it uh by searching for exoplanetary on uh just about any of your uh podcast listing options the uh the story deals with a family the wolverton family and there's uh alice ben calvert and uh, brother dustin that's the character that that you play robert and uh are you bobby here bobby i don't know robert you, don't know yeah. you don't know anymore okay it doesn't matter uh so uh and uh each of them, each of them have uh, ties to the exoplanetary corporation. You know, it's not unusual for uh, families to all work for the same company, and especially when the company is rather large. In this case, the company uh, makes up about a quarter of of uh, of the human economy in the 26th century. Uh, uh, it's an existence where people have. Human beings have abandoned the the spoiled Earth, uh, which has been ruined by uh, ruined by environmental uh, ruined ruined by ruined by basically uh, a, a sort of uh, <coughs> depleting the Earth completely uh, or as completely as we could. Uh, certain people were able to leave the earth and start start up again on the moon and its space stations and in uh on the planets and moons of our solar system and this company exoplanetary decides to that if they want to expand they have to go beyond the solar system they have to figure out how and the first mm -hmm. season deals with how they go beyond the solar system. The second season, which we're working on completing now, COVID sort of got in our way, mm -hmm. uh, is dealing with the aftermath of that. And the third season will be dealing with um, will be dealing with how ultimately ultimately people deal with uh, matters of matters of the soul. In, in this in this strange environment which has no real government has no real laws just has a company that you work for for money to pay for that company for things like oxygen and a place to live <laughs> yeah. 
and it's it's a it's a it's a dystopia but it also has a lot about the talks a lot about the human condition and uh talks a lot about as avram does in this story uh basically very very human issues in, in an entertaining way that of course involves uh science fiction mm -hmm. yeah. i think there's um avram has lots of really short stories that seem to almost connect and be making a sort of universe there are stories that are within one universe but uh some of these stories remind me of elements in exoplanetary and i think avram would have absolutely loved exoplanetary and wanted to be I, I would i would certainly like to think so having having I read a little bit of of his work it's 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 uh, he's certainly he's certainly somebody who uh, deserves to be talked about and uh, and 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 understood yeah yeah oh yeah he's got lots of great stories the country life is often envied by those who dwell in this city why well there's the peace and quiet of the country night For Walt and Emma Towns of Haynes Mill, Arkansas, it's a calm that's rarely ever broken by a stranger's visit. Sci-Fi Radio presents an adaptation of Avram Davidson's short story, The Grantha Sighting. We'll play it by ear. Hello there, Emma. Walt. Hello, Joe. Now, good to see you, Mr. Trowbridge. Emma and Walt Towns, this is Mary Anderson. She's with me on the Unexplained Aerial Phenomena Coordinating Committee. Oh, how nice. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Towns. Uh, Mr. Towns. Our friends just call us Walt and Emma. And this is Mr. Tom Noble. Uh, just call me Long Tom, folks. Oh, you're the radio man. Well. Long Tom would like to record an interview for his program, if you folks don't mind that. Mind? Mind? No. You folks just come on in and make yourselves at home. Thanks. Okay, Walt. Bill, you can bring the gear inside. Now, we've got coffee and tea, we've got home-baked bread and preserves, and there's sandwiches. And there's some of my special watermelon wine. <laughs> you just help yourself. Oh, this looks just wonderful. Well, mighty nice. And real tasty, too. You know, folks, I've been up here several times now, and then you two have always put on a big spread like this. We talked about it on the way up here and agreed that you've been more than accommodating. So we decided that the committee would pay for these refreshments. Yes, it's the least we can do. Oh, no, we don't want that. We wouldn't think of it. Please, we really want now, to. You heard it all. We won't even consider it. Y'all just go on and eat, and let's say no more about it. Joe tells me you folks wouldn't take any payment for newspaper stories or photographs, either. Oh, no, sir. We just want to be a help, if we can. Uh, Tom, we're all set up here now. <coughs> oh. Um, Emma, Walt, are you folks ready? Yeah, we sure are. Oh. <clears throat> Hello out there on the party line. This is Long Tom Noble coming to you from Haynes Mill, Arkansas. I'm out here with Walt and Emma Towns, two folks who've had one of the strangest experiences of anyone in these parts. But, uh, <clears throat> but before you hear from Walt and Emma, there are some other folks out here who represent the Unexplained Aerial Phenomena Coordinating Committee. Joe Trowbridge was the first person to talk to Walt and Emma after their encounter. So, Joe, you, you had something you wanted to say to our listeners? It's about that uh, cloth-like substance that was found up here on the night of October the 3rd. It's still defying the laboratory analysis, but uh, we've asked the lab to give us a call tonight so that we can report on your show the very latest. Uh, well, uh, anyway, back to you, Long Tom. Mm -hmm. Oh, <coughs> well, yeah. No. I, uh, I sure didn't know they made apple butter like this anymore. <laughs> Yes, sir. The Towns out here in Haynes Mill are poultry farmers by trade. But any time Emma wants to go into the preserves business, <laughs> no, she can sure count on me. Oh, stop it, Mr. Long. No, it's for God's truth, I'm telling. 
And this chicken salad sandwich, oh, it's the finest it's ever been the pleasure to put in my mouth. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Uh, be sure you edit that one out, Bill. Okay. How is it that good country folk like Walt and Emma Towns find themselves at the center of so much attention? Well, it happened in the evening on October 3rd, a day that passed like every other day in the lonesome Arkansas countryside. Emma scattered corn for the chickens as Walt milked the cow. The pigs were slopped. There was time to do some cleaning, and of course the eggs were collected, candled, and packed. And no one came to visit. Yes, October 3rd was a day like any other day. Until just about dark. Oh, that sure was a fine meal, Emma. Uh, do you need a hand with the dishes? Uh, Emma? Emma, what is it? Come over here to the window, will you? See that cloud? Mm. Uh, which one? That dark. Right. Right through the sunset. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what about it? Whoa, there's something very funny about that cloud. It looks just like a cloud to me. No, there's colors inside. And they keep changing. And, and it's moving this way. There. Did you see it? I think it's coming right down in our yard. Emma, that ain't no cloud. You're right, Paul. That ain't no cloud. What is that thing? I can't rightly tell. It's getting awful dark. Let's go out and turn on the porch light. Well, well, okay, if you want to. I think we scared him. You're right. Let's go down and, and see what they want. Hello in there. Can we help you? We didn't mean to scare you. Y'all come on out. Oh, just look at that. That's the strangest looking couple I've seen in a long time. Look at that baby. And what about those clothes they're wearing? Looks almost like bloomers. Mighty light for this time of year. Yeah, they must be cold. <laughs> hey, maybe that's why they're so blue. Yes. Uh, uh, well, my name is Emma Towns, and, and this is my husband, Walt. Uh, you folks in some kind of trouble? Look how short and broad they are. feelings. <laughs> you folks are going to catch your death out here with no coats on. Why don't you come on in and sit still? Isn't it nicer in here? Oh, what a sheep baby. Looks kind of like its father to me. Now, Walt. What's she trying to say? Why, she's holding something out to you, Ma. Of course. She's trying to tell us that she wants to warm up the baby's bottle. Why, sure you can, dear. Come on up back here to the kitchen with me. Uh, uh, we don't get many visitors around here, mister. Could I get you something? Uh, how about a glass of watermelon wine? Yeah, No? <laughs> well, well, just what can I do for you? Yeah, I wish I knew what you was trying to say. Oh, I see. It's that thing you were driving. That that, that rattle did sound pretty bad. Well, 
Well, come on. Let's go take a look at it. Yoo-hoo! You fellas about got it fixed? Yeah. Just a loose, uh, whatchamacallit, on the thingamabob. Is the baby okay? Well, it's asleep now. All it needed was a bottle and a clean diaper. We were happy to be of help. Anytime you're around this way, you just drop right in. Jerry Rig on that thingamabob could use a finer tune. <sighs> sure was nice having someone to visit with. Mm. Heaven only knows how long it will be before anyone else comes this way. Before we get going with the real true story of what happened, I think many of my listeners would like to know just a little bit more about the two nice folks all this happened to. Now, Emma Towns here is about as sweet and hospitable a lady as you could ever want to meet. And if I do say so myself, a mighty fine cook to boot. And Walt, well, well, he, he's got a real sense of humor, don't you, Walt? Well, I, <laughs> yeah, um, I guess so. Well, from what Joe tells me, you really tried to put him on when he first came out here to talk to you. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> yeah, well, I was... <laughs> I was just having a little fun. <laughs> Joe says you were a real card. Joe, why don't you step up here and tell us what old Walt tried to pull on a serious UFO investigator like yourself? Well, it was just a couple of hours after the sighting. Howdy. What can I do for you? Who is it, Walt? Ask him on in. Come on in. I'm Joe Trowbridge of the UAPCC. Uh, that's the Unexplained Aerial Phenomena Coordinating Committee. I uh, just heard that there was a UFO sighting in this vicinity. A what? Uh, a sighting. You know, a flying saucer from outer space. Oh, so that's what it was. Uh, you saw it? Uh, how close was it? Well, it landed right in our front yard. In your front yard? What did the aliens look like? Well, I'll tell you. They were blue. Blue? Yeah, well, sort of. Um, maybe blue-green, you know. Well, uh, what were they wearing? Bloomers. Bloomers? <sighs> well, did they say what their purpose was in visiting Earth? Oh, sure, yeah. They told us right off. They needed some help to fix up their airship, and, and when I helped the mister do that, Emma helped the missus with the baby. Now, hey, wait a minute. You don't really expect me to believe that. Why not? Well, it's nonsense. No serious UFO investigator worth his salt is going to be taken in by a story such as that. Of course not. You just hush up, Walt. Walt's just joking, Mr. Trowbridge. Shame on you, Walt. Teasing this nice gentleman. Why, it didn't happen like that at all. It didn't? It didn't. No, it didn't. It, it, what did happen? I mean, what really happened? Well, Walt, I've got to give you credit keeping your sense of humor at a time like that. If something like that had happened to me, I'd be shaking in my boots. Well, anyway, we need to get down to brass tacks and do some serious talking about what really happened that night. Emma, the mic is all yours. Well, they were tall. Very tall. And they had on spice suits. They looked like us, only their heads were bigger. And they had no hair. No hair at all. Their leader spoke to us. Well, that is, it was more like telepathy or something. He said that his name was... Grantham. That's it. His name was Grantham. Uh, huh? And he said we should be afraid because they came in peace. Earth people, he said, we have observed you for a long time. And now we feel 
that the time has come to make ourselves known to you. So, Grandpa came in peace then. Huh? Yes, that's right. Won't you have another piece of homemade bread, Mr. Longton? <laughs> well, I might just do that, yes. Oh, I'll go get that. It might be the lad calling. And some tea. Well, if you insist. That's real friendly of you, Miss Emma Towns, down here in Haynes Mill, Arkansas. Uh, uh, no sugar, ju just cream, please. That was the lab. They had a report on the cloth-like substance left here by Grantha as a sample of his peaceful intentions and superior technology. Well, what did it say? Well, they said it was very soft, very absorbent, and can't be burned. <clears throat> is that all? Well, yes. Uh, how big is that cloth-like thing, anyway? Oh, I had the good fortune to see it at the lab. As a mother of three, the best comparison I can give is that it's it's just about the size of an ordinary diaper. <laughs> a diaper. <laughs> Our cast for today's story included George Latchford as Walt and Gene Evans as Emma. Long Tom was played by Melvin Bacon, and Joe was Dale Castle. Seth Davis, the other the host of this podcast, is his god godson and still finding things that have not been published. He just has boxes and boxes of stories that Avram wrote in his attic, and he's finding them one by one. Um, and one that's very famous or that's often referenced is about the life cycle of paper clips, how they eventually mm -hmm. become a bicycle. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of the, the Todd the Toaster series yes. in Exoplanetary. Can you explain Todd the Toaster a little? Todd, Todd the Toaster. Um, well, uh, just, as, just as we have now, we have these uh, sort of smart devices in our homes that that uh you know your your refrigerator suddenly realizes you're low on cheese and uh tells tells the grocery store to send you some cheese uh just as we have that it, it's it's slightly more advanced in the in the world of the 26th century uh to where you can actually you know have a conversation with your refrigerator to a certain extent but people don't really want to have a conversation with your refrigerator but in this case um in this case the uh, a, a a computer virus mm. has attacked a smart home and this home has uh everything everything has been taken over by the same human-like personality this ai named todd so you have Todd the toaster, and then Todd the electric toothbrush, Todd the ceiling fan, Todd the uh, Todd the uh, uh, Todd the coffee maker. There was Todd the coffee maker, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's 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 quite a um, it's quite a problem to have when when you have this sort of chattering underclass in your home all of a sudden, and mm -hmm. they're just they're just they, all they really want to do is talk to each other and. <laughs> talk to you and you can't really tell them what to do uh yeah so that was that was that was something that occurred to me that that could be a problem in the future where you would <laughs> you would you would have this sort of you know endless endless muppet show of of, of personal objects that yes. you you just you just you just really couldn't you really couldn't pipe get them to pipe down you know they're having parties at night playing poker and such I imagine like the, the forgotten crock pot and the forgotten blender on the top of the fridge would be the two old Muppets heckling yeah. everyone on there, stage. You know, and there'd be and there'd be, there'd be romances and, and and some of them would just not get along with each other and uh, and it would eventually you would have to burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Todd. Poor Todd. But Todd, like, but Todd is just a Todd is just a Todd is just an ordinary ordinary individual, an ordinary toaster, and uh, the 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 story I think has a satisfying conclusion for for he and his brethren. Mm. Oh so. Todd, oh Todd, I feel yes. like 
that would definitely be up Avram's alley and just so many ideas in exoplanetary. I think if you're a fan of Avram, you know, at Powell's books, we used to have those things that said, if you like, then try. Mm -hmm. I think any fan of Avram Davidson, Avram Davidson would just love any episode of exoplanetary. And one that also just feels very um, in line with what Avram was trying to do, keeping humor and humor in the science fiction tradition alive. Uh, the Violon episodes where this, this planet that all the vegetation is kind of purple. And if you start to eat any of the produce, you start to turn purple yourself and you become almost one with the planet. How, how does Violon work? Uh, well, rather well by by their standards. I yeah. mean, it, it's it's only it's only uh, it's only difficult if you plan to go anywhere afterwards because you you kind of got the yeah. you kind of got the stay. I liked the idea of. Um, I think I think many people are familiar with the idea of of how the world talks to us, how mm -hmm. nature communicates with us. And, you know, we, we go, you know, you go out for a walk and, you know, you see a squirrel or you notice the same tree over and over again. And you, you sort of develop, you develop a, a kind of a relationship with the world around you. Hmm. And it occurred to me that on a, on another planet that there, there could, there could be at some point uh, a life, a sort of connective connective consciousness that that would sort of unite unite you with your your neighbor the tree and and your neighbor the squirrel and 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 and, and all the little woodchucks and, and things and um the, the, the lanus yeah the, the lanus the lanus I, I definitely a lot of fun those uh i, I uh <laughs> My, I think, I think, but I think the really what it came down to is I liked the idea of a cowboy who could talk to his horse, mm. and 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 the horse would talk back, you know, because because I think I think I think I think that that's that there's there's something very playful about that idea. I mm. think that I think that when you're a child <laughs> and you're playing with a doll, perhaps or a horse. It's it's only natural to have the doll and the horse talk to each other, mm. and so so there, there there's an element of that as well of 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 bringing something bringing something slightly childlike, and then creating this creating this world that was um, idyllic and completely unsuitable for uh, habitation. I mean there. Mm. The, the idea the idea too that you know just because just because you know from afar a planet might seem to be someplace that we might want to we might want to occupy uh we don't know what's going on there much as mm -hmm. much as people who came to the new world which is Europeans who came to the new world may not have really fully thought out that there might already be people here and maybe already be a very complicated world happening over here. And, and that of course led to, led to terrible destruction. In this case, in this case, Violon is, uh, is, is very, very able to passively fight back in a, in a very fundamental way. So, hmm. I, I like the idea of giving 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 this world a, a defense mechanism, a natural defense mechanism that was uh, going to keep it from turning into, you know, a holiday home for mm -hmm. wealthy executives and so on. And far, the planet, you know, yeah. Planet fights back. The purple planet. planet. The purple yeah. planet. Yeah. Well, I think, um, yeah. Anyone who's been reading. Avram Davidson or loves the sci-fi tradition, Exoplanetary is the best thing to listen to. It's probably, I think it's the best uh, radio drama on Spotify or on any podcast right now. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, it's the highest quality. The writing is the most fun. And that was one thing that Avram Davidson was the best at, was writing actual um, brilliant sentences that uh, are new and fresh. And Exoplanetary mm. does that. And 
other podcasts do that, but I think Exoplanetary does it best. Um, and that's why I think Avram, if he was still around, he would choose Exoplanetary. Uh, mm. Love to be a part of that. Well, I, I, I would, I would, I would, uh, that, that, that's, it's difficult to know what Avram would think, but that's certainly yeah. very flattering. That's really very flattering. Well, at least I know that I think fans of Avram would certainly love Exoplanetary. So that would be my. Well, we welcome them. And we, we we're, we're getting, as I was telling you just before we uh, got, got set up, we're planning a big uh, four part uh, season finale story, a, 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 a big, a big, uh, big, big story equivalent to uh, say your, your feature film. And uh Cool. I hope, I hope, I hope that uh, I hope that people will check out the earlier episodes and be ready for that when that comes out uh, later this year. I'm very excited for that, and I know that my character will be having some big changes, and I'm very excited. He's 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 going to he's going to get a new job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get a, a big job. <laughs> he's not ready for it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> going from a podcaster to, well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we'll, we... we'll, we'll, we'll see what that happens. Anyway, yeah. as you were saying. Well, Christopher, where can we find Exoplanetary again? What platforms? And can we also find the Patreon? Well, Patreon, uh, you could find us over at patreon.com slash exoplanetary. We put the, uh, the new episodes there first. Uh, mm-hmm. And we're also working on, uh, for Exoplanetary Media, uh, our first uh, non-drama podcast, which is Next Stop Xanadu. Uh, I've got some very exciting guests. Cool. Uh, it's a film podcast talking about, talking with the most interesting people in the world mm-hmm. about their favorite, uh, favorite films, a favorite film of theirs. Basically, uh, I asked the person to pick a film, something that was meaningful to them that they haven't seen in about a year. We spend the first half of the podcast talking about their memories of the film and getting to know them a little bit. And the second part, we, uh, we, we, we go to our separate corners and we watch the film and come back with it fresh in mind, talk about what was different about it, talk about, you know, things we noticed, you know, the actors in the film and, and all, all that sort of stuff, sort of a, sort of a different take on the, uh, on the, on the film podcast uh that i think will be i think will be interesting to people and that's coming out this year as well our first guests are uh we've got dr dilip Geste, who is a prominent neurologist author of the book wiser we've got uh, the reverend barry uh w lynn who is former uh former leader of well basically somebody who's very prominent in the uh keeping church and state separate uh he coming of course being the reverend from the the church side of things but uh also very important political figure in his own right and uh also just some just some good friends that i have that i like to talk to uh film about Uh, so i think it's i think it's gonna be an interesting show for people interesting interesting and 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 hopefully funny and fascinating so cool next stop xanadu Next stop Xanadu. That's coming soon. But Exoplanetary, yeah, exoplanetary.com uh, slash exoplanetary. In fact, we will be dropping the next stop Xanadu uh, episodes there first because okay. it's it's being supported. You support all exoplanetary media stuff through that Patreon. Okay. And of course, uh, if you're just listening to Exoplanetary, uh, you can find us on stitcher spotify player fm uh, uh and apple podcasts pretty much wherever it is you find podcasts um okay and if you find one and you don't find it there let me know and i'll get it there all right taking taking right. everything over just as exoplanetary <laughs> well you, you gotta you gotta go you gotta go one piece at a time like the johnny cash song one piece yes, at that time. cadillac yeah that's right all right. Well, Christopher, thank you very much for coming on the show. And thank you for being my first guest. We'll see. Hopefully I did an okay job hosting. Uh, so thank you to Seth Davis for setting this up for us. And uh, thank you very much, Christopher, for coming on to the show. You're very welcome. I had a great time. Good. God only knows. It sounds like a story to me. Some crazy fable